The ZR1 Corvette had been Detroit's cutting edge car since it first rolled out in 1990. Its double overhead cam, four valve per cylinder, aluminum block 350 was the be all and end all in American performance. This engine cranked out 375 horsepower in street trim and the vet's handling was race ready. Duplicating the performance of the ZR1 in an automobile costing half as much would be a nice trick if they could pull it off. But SLP's high-tech hot rodders were up to the task. As a baseline for their modifications, they chose the 1992 Firebird. This car already offered blurred vision handling and bonsai straight line acceleration. But when it rolled out as the new SLP Firehawk, it was a steel-bodied Corvette. Those cars were very special. They were built really for showroom stock racing. Uh, they had uh, highly modified uh, L98 TPI engines that made 350 horsepower. Uh, you could get them with competition Brembo brakes. You could get them with roll bars, no back seat, a ton of chassis modifications. Uh, that was really the uh, most hard-edged F-body you've ever been able to buy. It was reflected in the price, of course, but um, if you look back in the history of, uh, of F-body performance, the 92 Firehawk has to be at the top. To create the Firehawk, the Firebird's factory drivetrain was removed, and in its place went a special high-strength four-bolt main 5.7-liter block, a forged crank, the Hypo pink rods, and LT1 pistons, and a custom ground SLP roller cam. On top of the short block, SLP added a set of ported cylinder heads with 2-inch intake and 1.56-inch exhaust valves. A special T-RAM port injection intake manifold with tuned intake runners and a larger throttle body fed the charge into the cylinders. And a set of stainless steel headers fed the big SLP exhaust system. This engine made 350 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 390 foot-pounds of torque at 4,400 and would pull strongly all the way to the 6,000 RPM red line. Getting all this new power to the ground required another upgrade. The ZF six-speed gearbox from the Corvette, a Dana 44 rear end with 354 gears, and Ronal wheels with P275 40 ZR17 rubber made sure this car would hook up on the launch and stick in the turns. All this performance came with a hefty price tag, though, nearly $40,000. The Formula Firebird's base price was around $19,000, and the Firehawk conversion ran it up another $20,000, pricing it out of the range of most Firebird buyers. This first Firehawk was exactly what SLP had promised, a car that offered Corvette-style performance, costing thousands of dollars less. But even though the 92 Firehawk was a technological breakthrough and an awesome first effort, unfortunately, the marketplace wasn't ready for a $40,000 Formula Firebird, no matter how quick it was. As a result, only 25 92 Firehawks were ever built. But SLP's original concept of all-world muscle at showroom prices was still a good one. It just needed a little help from General Motors. That help came in the form of the 1993 Firebird. The fourth generation F bodies were beautifully styled. And more importantly, Pontiac now offered the car with an LT1 engine and a six-speed transmission. This meant SLP didn't have to replace the entire drivetrain. So the cost to convert a Firebird into a Firehawk headed south in a hurry. This was the big bang for the buck SLP had been looking for. Stay with us as street legal performance comes to the people when the American muscle car continues. SLP had graduated from making a conversion package for the Firebird to, in essence, making a street legal race car in just a few years. But their original vision of making a car that outperformed the 60s muscle cars in every way without costing an arm and a leg was still out there. But finally, the prize was in sight, thanks to the fourth generation Firebirds and Camaros. The 93, with the all new body style, GM had raised the bar to 275 horsepower in a base V8 Firebird. So by adding a Ram air package to it, we got it up to the magic number, 300 horsepower. 
building around the 275 horsepower LT1 and a six-speed transmission, SLP replaced the stock formula hood with a new unit made of composite material, featuring a cold air induction system, which upped the horsepower to 300. 17-inch wheels and ZR-rated rubber were part of the standard package, as was a new rear spoiler, the Firehawk graphic treatment, and megaphone-style tailpipes. This basic Firehawk conversion added a much more reasonable $59.95 to the Firebird's base price. Having learned a lesson with their first cars, SLP now created a new way of buying the Firehawk. Instead of offering a one-price hot rod with all the bells and whistles like they did in 1992, now you could order from an a la carte menu of performance options, according to your go-fast desires and your budget. Going down the menu, a performance exhaust system was available for $9.95, which was good for an additional 15 horsepower. And to go with your upgraded tires and wheels, you could order the full-on suspension package for another $14.95. As a final touch, a few dress-up and convenience items were also available, which added a touch of specialness to a car that everyone knew was going to be a collector item. SLP's a la carte plan worked. 201 Firehawks sold in 1993, 500 were sold in 1994, and 671 hit the streets in 1995, including 102 convertibles. Performance from this new Firehawk was right in line with the muscle cars of the 60s. 13 second quarter miles and a top speed of almost 150 miles per hour meant Firehawk owners didn't have to back down from anything on the street, no matter how big and bad or nostalgic it was. Finally, the SLP mission had been fulfilled. They had created a car with bonsai acceleration that went around corners with the best of the world's sports cars for a few bucks more than a showroom Firebird, and it was street legal in all 50 states. Now that their vision had been achieved, the SLP team set about widening their lineup. In mid-1995, SLP created the Comp TA, a special car based on the Trans Am, and made to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the BF Goodrich TA radial tire. After their success with Pontiac, in 1996, SLP introduced the Super Sport Camaro. With its retro hood scoop and hugger orange paint scheme, it was a throwback to the legendary SS396 cars of the 60s, with enough punch to make you think there was a good old big block rat motor under the hood. Because of SLP, we were able to take their engineering expertise, take a Z28, and bump the horsepower on that LT1 engine to come out with this great car in 1996 called the Camaro SS, which really brought us right back to the first generation car and the muscle cars of the past. By now, the trust level between GM and SLP was so well established that SLP was given the task of building Pontiac's 1996 and 1997 Ram Air Trans Ams. This is big time stuff for a company that started out tuning up GM's F bodies. But when you're good, you're good. And on the horizon were even more supercars made for a more diverse audience. We'll tell you all about it when the American Muscle Car returns. After the Firehawk success, SLP set their sights on the sport sedan and sport truck markets with the Grand Prix GTX and the Seeker and Express sport trucks. But by far, the big news was the massive popularity of the Super Sport Camaro. There was a risk in resurrecting one of the most beloved names in muscle car history. SLP knew that anything named Super Sport would have a lot to live up to. Their version of the SS Camaro met this challenge head on. The SS has always been the ultimate in terms of horsepower. One of the beauties of the uh, Camaro SS is, let's face it, it is performance American style. What do I mean by that? I mean, it's got a muscular V8 engine, it's got rear wheel drive, solid axle. It's what we've always known as the American performance muscle car. We're today building the fastest Camaros and the most powerful Camaros we've ever built. And you can run the air conditioner while you're doing it. For 2001, there's a V6 revolution going on with a high-pole version of an old favorite, the Rally Sport Camaro. 
All the go-fast tricks learned from the Super Sport were folded into this car, along with some special tuning to create a nimble V6-powered street machine that beats V8 cars' insurance premiums by a mile. 2001 is a banner year for SLP. It marks the Firehawk's 10th anniversary. To commemorate this, SLP has created a limited edition Firehawk. This black and gold beauty features gold wheels and special 10th anniversary badging. Under the hood is the 335 horsepower LS1 engine. Only a thousand of these Firehawks will be built, making them very special indeed. 10th anniversary Firehawk, I'm very, very excited about. Number one, it's the longest running niche vehicle in the history of General Motors. When you think about all the great products that GM's built over the years, SLP's Firehawk has been on the scene the longest. Today's Firehawks and SS Camaros are created in SLP's new facility, located 20 minutes away from GM's F-body assembly lines. Under one roof, SLP's 250 car builders handle the complete transformation from great car to supercar. Stock rear axles are changed to high-strength Auburn units. Shocks, springs, and sway bars are upgraded. And bigger brakes are installed. SLP's own design fiberglass hood, with its more efficient horsepower-making airbox and heat extractors, is manufactured on-site and taken straight from finishing to installation. This step ensures the highest quality control for these parts. 17 by 9 wheels and Firestone P275 40 17 ZR tires are mated perfectly to the car's needs and capabilities. And each car gets its own special cosmetic treatment as a warning that this car packs a little more heat than ordinary Camaros and Firebirds. This heat comes from the latest version of America's favorite engine, the 350 cubic inch LS1 small block. When the LS1 V8 debuted in the F car in 1998, a lot of people questioned the wisdom of putting a pushrod two valve uh, engine in a modern car. But I tell you what, those guys really knew what they were doing. Uh, you don't get the flat, broad torque curve um, of the V8 with an overhead cam engine. Um, it may be traditional architecture, but believe me, it's a state-of-the-art power plant. The 327 horsepower LS1 engine provides low 13 second quarter mile times and the car corners like a slot car. The bark from the catback exhaust system is guaranteed 60s cool and the SLP graphics are genuine traffic stoppers. Firehawks and SS Camaros are extremely low production automobiles and they've already generated enough excitement from car collectors to make them overnight classics. But these are cars that are meant to be driven, and driven hard. And that's how a car gets to be a classic. SLP has done all this their way, using the highest tech methods to achieve the same old result. Kick in the pants performance in a car that's drop dead gorgeous for a price everyone can afford. Hey, isn't that the same way the muscle car thing started? Thanks for watching. And please remember, don't crush them, restore them.